Air travel is a big part of our lives, but it also contributes a lot to the pollution problem. A new flight path proposal could increase noise over their homes. Specifically about 12% of the carbon dioxide emissions from all types of transportation. This is a significant concern because it adds to climate change. The climate change is increasing the amount of clear air turbulence in the atmosphere. Emphasizing the urgent need for a big change in how airplanes work. Changing the way things are done in aviation won't happen quickly or easily, but the clock is ticking because climate change is happening fast. Even though there are challenges, there's a ray of hope. A new kind of jet, the microwave plasma fighter jet, has been created, and it could make a big difference. This new technology has the potential to greatly reduce the pollution caused by airplanes. making air travel more eco-friendly and sustainable in the future. You are watching Battleground. Consider subscribing to watch regular episodes. Facing the growing problem of global warming affecting both military and commercial aviation, a dedicated team of Chinese researchers is making big progress in engineering. Led by an experienced expert, the team wants to help modern airplanes break free from using fossil fuels. Instead, they aim to make planes travel around the world using only air and electricity. The key to their big goal is something special and somewhat secret, plasma. A few years ago, a smart Chinese professor named Zhao Tong started looking into using microwaves to create synthetic diamonds. The story took an interesting turn when the professor wondered if this technology could be used to make things move. He gathered a team of experts at the Institute of Technological Sciences at Wuhan University. This journey started in the spring of 2020 when they began trying to prove their bold idea. When they finally figured it out, Professor Tong and his team proudly shared their discoveries in a paper called Jet Propulsion by microwave aeroplastics. They explored the idea of making things move without using the usual fossil fuel-powered jet engines. Now, let's get into the core of this breakthrough. Plasma. While not a common word for many, plasma is one of the four main forms of matter. Scientists say it's not only the most common type of matter in the entire universe, but also what formed right after the Big Bang. Plasma happens naturally when molecules get super hot, or when there's a strong electric field. You can find it in space in things like the sun and stars, but we can also make it ourselves by heating up a neutral gas or using a strong electric field, often with microwaves or lasers. What we've managed to demonstrate inside JET is that we can create a mini sun, the right kind of mini sun, hold it there for a sustained period and get really good performance levels. Plasma has many practical uses, from growing artificial crystals and medical treatments to powering TVs and helping with environmental studies. But where plasma really shines, quite literally, is in space. Scientists are exploring the use of plasma in aviation, a concept not entirely new, as plasma engines have been considered for space travel. The novel idea is to implement plasma engines in airplanes, operating them at altitudes above 30 kilometers, where traditional jet engines face limitations. This technology has the potential to enable planes to reach the edge of Earth's atmosphere and beyond, presenting new opportunities in aviation. Unlike sci-fi depictions, these plasma thrusters do not require complex high-voltage systems. They use internal currents for ion movement, enhancing efficiency and safety. Space agencies such as the European Space Agency, the Iranian Space Agency, and NASA favor this approach. Understanding the distinction between ion thrusters, like those on NASA's Dawn probe, and plasma engines is crucial. Ion thrusters expel positive ions of gases like xenon, while plasma thrusters, with greater flexibility, use various gases, making them versatile. The ionization process differs, with ion thrusters using cathodes and plasma thrusters employing microwave-intensive methods. Thrust levels vary, with ion thrusters suitable for long space missions and plasma thrusters offering higher thrust, functioning in both space and Earth's atmosphere, particularly in aviation. Considering power requirements, Ion thrusters demand less power. What we have here is a high-powered ion thruster, and the way it produces thrust... ...making them suitable for missions requiring efficiency, such as deep space probes. Plasma thrusters, requiring more power due to higher thrust, have potential applications in aviation. Both operate in space, but plasma thrusters can also function in Earth's atmosphere, providing adaptability for aviation where ion thrusters may be ineffective. Despite their promise, each type faces challenges. For instance, ion thrusters need a continuous supply of xenon gas, especially on extended missions. On the other hand, plasma thrusters face challenges when trying to use the technology for planes and dealing with limits in power. While plasma engines and ion thrusters are a bit alike, plasma engines have the potential to change aviation by using less fossil fuel, reducing carbon pollution, and helping with greenhouse issues. 
But even though plasma thrusters work great in outer space, they're not perfect for Earth's air. In Earth's air, spaceship plasma engines struggle to make a lot of power because they need a ton of energy to work right. Engineers everywhere are having a tough time making this technology work on Earth. The problem happens when the fast xenon ions, commonly used in these engines, bump into Earth's air and lose a lot of their power because of the air pushing back. Making these engines work on our planet is a hard job. Professor Tang and his team believe they've addressed a significant challenge in plasma propulsion, making it more effective in Earth's atmosphere. Their innovative engine, unlike traditional methods, uses concentrated microwaves to turn air into plasma, achieving high pressure necessary for future planes. The prototype engine demonstrated impressive performance, producing 11 newtons of thrust with a 400-watt microwave jet. Notably, 4 newtons of thrust were generated solely from air pressure, resulting in approximately 28 newtons per kilowatt, showing promise for efficiency. However, scaling up this technology for regular plane engines poses challenges involving factors like airflow and microwave energy. Similar challenges are faced by Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket, VASIMER, and Electrothermal Thrusters designed for spaceships. These systems demand a substantial 200 kilodollars of electrical power for a modest 1.12 LB thrust. Vasimer, a significant advancement in electric rocket engines, utilizes powerful radio waves emitted by special antennas called couplers. These waves play a crucial role in heating the gas to create plasma, which, with its high temperature and electric charge, propels the engine. The unique aspect of Vasimer involves an external magnetic field, ensuring plasma stability, guidance, and acceleration for effective space travel. Despite the challenges, innovations in plasma propulsion and electric rocket engines showcase potential breakthroughs in both aviation and space exploration, offering more efficient and environmentally friendly options for the future. But here's the thing, in space, where there's a lot of stuff, getting the energy needed for these engines might be okay. But if we think about using these engines on an airplane, the extra weight from the equipment needed to make power could be a big problem. It might make regular jet engines seem more practical, and there's more. Plasma engines can get super hot during work, so much that they could melt everything around them. This extreme heat can cause problems and damage the system over time. This challenge is called plasma erosion, and it can wear away the inset of the thruster, which could lead to the whole system failing. To turn a small laboratory model into a real working electric plasma thruster, the researchers in Wuhan need to do lots of tests with different materials and ways of building it. They have to find the right balance between making it powerful and keeping it safe. It's a big job, but they're committed to trying every way they can. For their tests, they have a setup made from strong materials like quartz and steel. Quartz can handle high heat and tough conditions from the thruster. Steel is strong and gives support to the setup, making sure it can handle the forces and pressures during testing. Just like with any new idea, some people are excited about the thought of changing aviation by using microwave aeropy plasma thrust. But there are also people who have doubts and concerns. Western analysts, including MIT professor Steve Barrett, express skepticism about the claims made by the Wuhan team regarding plasma propulsion. Barrett criticizes the Chinese researchers, stating that the physics and measurements used in their work are fundamentally flawed. He likens it to heating a pressure cooker until the valve rattles and calling it thrust, emphasizing that pressure cookers can't fly. Furthermore, there are concerns about the lack of transparency in the data released by the Wuhan team. Some experts note the absence of information on the highest microwave power levels when the Chinese prototype reaches maximum airspeed, raising questions about potential issues with the engine's performance at higher power levels or the lack of testing under those conditions. In the cutting-edge field of technology, skepticism is viewed as a positive force, driving rigorous testing and analysis to ensure the safety and viability of groundbreaking technologies like plasma propulsion. As these challenges are addressed, the potential of this transformative technology will become clearer. Advances in plasma engines have also spurred innovation in making jet engines electric. While past efforts focused on auxiliary equipment, recent initiatives like the More Electric Engine ME, aim to reduce exhaust emissions by electrifying the engine itself. This shift contributes to significant reductions in carbon dioxide emissions. Incorporating sustainable aviation fuel and improving propulsion fan size are steps toward greener aviation. However, it's crucial to note that these initiatives have mainly targeted auxiliary systems, rather than the core jet engine and fuel. The major challenge is to make airplanes more environmentally friendly by reducing or eliminating the gases they release. This involves changing how airplane engines function. International organizations, such as the International Civil Aviation Organization ICAO, and the International Air Transport Association IATA, 
have ambitious goals to cut airplane emissions in half by 2050. Traditional methods of improving engine efficiency and using better fuel are insufficient, prompting the aviation industry to explore significant changes in engine technology. This shift could accommodate the increasing number of people flying while reducing the environmental impact of planes. We're realizing that instead of the regular jet engines, we could use electric motors, and this is changing how we think about flying. This big shift is pushing aviation researchers and airplane makers to focus on making electric motors. There are two main ways to do this. One way is the pure electric system, where only electric motors are used for power. This could almost get rid of the gases coming out of the engines. The other way is the hybrid system, which is like a mix of a regular jet engine and an electric motor. This hybrid system tries to balance good performance with being better for the environment. So, changing how airplane engines work is a big deal in aviation history. It takes us beyond what we're used to with regular engines and puts us in a time where being good for the environment and efficient is super important. As researchers and makers work on these new electric engines, the aviation industry is getting ready to make a big difference in the fight against climate change. BAE Systems, the lead contractor for the UK's upcoming Tempest fighter jet, is exploring the possibility of using electricity to power the aircraft instead of traditional jet fuel. This move holds environmental promise, but concerns about the readiness of electric propulsion systems by the jet's planned entry into service in 2035 have been raised. BAE Systems is collaborating with Williams Advanced Engineering, known for high-performance batteries, to explore various options for the Tempest fighter. The fighter, unveiled in 2018, is considered a sixth-generation aircraft with advanced features, including a digital-age transition and cutting-edge armament. The potential electrification of the Tempest represents a significant technological leap toward reducing the environmental impact of military aviation, aligning with global efforts to combat climate change. However, challenges in development, testing, and deployment raise uncertainties about the system's operational readiness by 2035. Despite these challenges, the consideration of electrification for the Tempest underscores the evolving nature of aviation technology and the ongoing commitment to innovation and sustainability in the industry.